Hello everybody and welcome to this video. This is the second video in a new series on William Shakespeare's Macbeth. In this series I'll be analysing Macbeth extracts in order to aid your English literature exam. In today's video we will be analysing the witches scene in Act 1, Scene 1. The first scene of Macbeth is set in a deserted place, a heath in Scotland. This scene is short but full of dramatic impact. The opening scene lures the audience into the supernatural world of the witches. The thunder and lightning create an eerie opening where the witches introduce us to the theme of evil, which is a centre theme in the play. This scene sets up the theme of appearance versus reality. Shakespeare presents a world where nothing is as it seems or as it should be. Throughout the play, the witches are referred to as the Weird Sisters. The old English word weird means fate. In classic mythology, these fates were three goddesses who would spin the thread of human destiny, hence dictating the destinies of mankind. These fates link to the three witches as their prophecies awaken the best ambition acting as the catalyst of his murderous act. In the opening stage directions, the audience is exposed to a storm, thunder and lightning. As well as that, in the opening lines, the first witch also asks, when shall they meet again? Will it be in thunder, lightning or in rain? The weather is symbolic, as whenever the witches are present, there is thunder and lightning. Hence, the storm symbolising the disruption of the great chain of being, the natural order of things. Therefore, this foreshadows the disturbance of peace and calmness in Scotland. The second wish replies, when the hurly burly's done, when the battle lost and won. Now here, the word hurly burly suggests they will meet once the uproar of the battle is over. Now the battle here is a reference to uh, King Duncan's forces which are fighting against the King of Norway, which obviously Macbeth is part of. The paradox of when the battle's lost and won, the paradox, the contradictory statement adds to the idea of confusion. The third which then replies, that will be ere the set of sun. And what she means by that is the battle will be finished before sundown. And therefore the witches now prepare to meet with Macbeth upon the heath. Now a heath is an open uncultivated, uncultivated land. Now the first witch says, come on grey Malkin. And the second witch responds with Paddock's calls. Now grey Malkin is an affectionate name for a cat. And a paddock is a toad. Now during the Jacobean era it was believed that Satan, so the devil, would send witches malevolent spirits to help them carry out his evil deeds or their evil deeds. These are what we call familiars and these familiars would take on the form of an animal. So the first witch is familiar takes on the form of a cat, the grey malkin, whilst the second witch is familiar takes on the form of a toad paddock in this act or scene we don't know the familiar of the third witch as she replies anon the witch then together and in sync recite fair is foul and foul is fair hover through the fog and the filthy air the reason for them reciting this together is to show that they are united, they are one. The diction, fair is foul and foul is fair, is significant as it is another paradoxal statement. Now a paradox is a contradictory statement, so we call this a paradoxical statement. This statement is meant to cause confusion to the audience. And therefore, the meaning of this statement is ambiguous. Ambiguous meaning unclear. This statement is a motive that runs throughout the play. On one hand, it could mean that appearances can be deceiving, 
Therefore, what seems fair and good is actually foul and evil, and vice versa. Secondly, it could mean what looks pretty, so fair, will become ugly, and things that are ugly will become beautiful. Thirdly, the fair and the foul could also show the struggle between good and evil, God and the devil. The fricative language, so fricative meaning the repetition or the alliteration of the F sound in fair, foul, foul, fair, fog and filthy, highlights that the witches delight in all that is evil and therefore want to hover through the fog and the murky air to the filthy air in order for them to create even more confusion and even more chaos in the human world. Now, for those of you who are aiming for the top grades, you must be aware of the structure of the play or the structure of the extract that they give you. Now, in this extract, the witches are speaking in rhyming couplets. Or for those of you who want to be really precise with your subject terminology, you can talk about they, they speak in paradoxical couplets. The fact that they speak in these rhymes so they've highlighted on green on the screen, done, one, fair and air, makes them seem almost inhumane and ominous, but also these rhythms and rhymes mirror and imitate the casting of a spell. Furthermore, the strict rhyming couplets of the witches could also show their supernatural power, the power of their mischief, which unconsciously tempts mankind into committing evil acts and we obviously do see that with Macbeth. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel before you leave. If you found this video helpful and would like more tutorials then please press the like button and leave a comment down below. Until next time, goodbye.